I've got two neat items to share today. They're way easier to sew than what you think. It's originally a dress, but you know a dress can be a top, so I have one of those as well. One for cooler weather, one for warmer weather. Hi sewing friends, I'm Karina from LiftingThingsAndNeedles.com. Welcome to this channel that is all about sewing, limitless sewing, and today I have a dress and a top to share with you. The original pattern is meant for a dress. There's no top version there. There's no shorter line for you to make a top, but it's always a possibility. You can always do that. So I have a dress and a sneaky top. And this is a brand new pattern from Itch to Stitch called Tustin Dress. And it's super beautiful. As soon as I saw the line art and the photos Kenneth posted, I love designs that have some sort of drape going diagonally across the body. And this is exactly what this dress does. The drafting for the front piece is really interesting. And there is a tie that comes from the front. There's there's also a separate tie sewn into the side seam that wraps around the whole of the waist including the back and then you can tie it up on the left side of you but they aren't. So the way that you tie this means that the shaping here is flexible and another feature that helps with shaping is a basta on one side. It's only needed on one side, don't think you need it on both, it's just the way that it's designed and I think it improves the feet amazingly. The neckline is rounded and sort of wider, it's not a low neckline, it's sort of hitting the clavicles here. I think it's the highest neckline I would be comfortable to wear and for sleeves you can choose either a short sleeve or a long sleeve, they are the type that are slim fitting. The length of the dress is designed to be at the knee or mid knee above the knee depending on your height and the shape of the skirt going out is slightly a-lined because the Tustin dress is a brand new pattern it's 20% off over at itch to stitch through friday the 7th of april if you want to get it for a bit less the price is already discounted there you don't need a special code and i will leave you my affiliate link in the description box if you'd like to use it i do receive a small commission back and that supports the work that i do here and to thank you for your support i'm always providing really helpful content here that will give you nice visuals to put your patterns together and you can join me and we can sew them together, right? You need neat fabrics for this one and the minimum amount of stretch that you need is 50% both horizontally and vertically. You do need that vertical stretch because it's quite fitted design up here on the top and the armhole. I think because the style of the dress is semi-fitted, fitted at the bust, you don't want something super light and clingy in my opinion. I would not try to use ITY or even rayon spandex, bamboo spandex, those types of fabrics I think are just too lightweight for it. Unless you want to use a slip underneath. <laughs> I don't know. I would just try to look for something more medium weight. I think double brush poly works well, cotton spandex, athletic knits, stretch velvet, maybe even a sweater knit would work well. With Ponty Roma, I'm a bit conflicted about it because I know some of the ones that exist are really heavy and really stiff, but I have also seen others that aren't too heavy and, and that stiff. I think it's about you touching and feeling it and seeing if it has a little bit of drape or not. I think a nice fabric would be rayon French terry. It's a little heavier than the lighter rayon spandex. Or sometimes there's some premium rayon spandex that is a little heavier as well. So just make sure it's not super light. That's all I'm gonna say. <laughs> I've sewn two versions. One is a dress and I chose an athletic knit. I love them because I can find them in a lot of colors. The type of fabric is matte. It's not shiny, it's not transparent, and it's nice and medium weight. 90% polyester, 10% spandex in a beautiful color. And my sneaky top version, I chose a sweater knit from my collection in just plain green. And I think it is a possibility you can make it with a sweater knit for sure, as long as it's got the required stretch and spandex in the blend. You need a tiny little bit of interfacing to stabilize shoulders and some of the areas where the ties are made. So make sure you have a little bit of that as well. Sizing goes from double zero to 40 US up to a 62 inch hip. And on this design, you will have a regular bust option and a full bust option. So if your difference between the high bust and the full bust is three or more inches, then the full bust option is going to work better for you. As a reference, the regular bust option would work for an A, a B, a C sewing bust cup size and then the full bust for larger cup sizes than that. Remember that sewing bust cup sizes are not the same as your bra cup sizes. I say that all the time because I always get questions. You know, the sewing bust cup size has to do with the difference between your upper bust and your full bust. Your bra cup size to the determine that they use the under bust and the full bust so it's not the same thing don't look at your bra and assume that that is your sewing bust cup size just measure what you need to measure and then you'll be good to go to choose your size about the ease at the bust you will have negative ease which means the garment is going to be slightly smaller than the measurements of your body and that does make sense it is a neat fabric there is 50% stretch there that'll give you a nice 
neckline, shoulder and sleeve fit. So it's about one and a quarter inches smaller at the bust. I'm happy with that. Then at the waist, you see that there's a lot of ease, but it actually is brought in by tying up on the side. So if untied, there's about eight to nine inches of ease at the waist. But don't think it's gonna be loose at the waist because you're gonna tie it up and then it's gonna be perfect. And then at the hip area, you're gonna have about one and a half inches of positive ease. I mean the cusp of them both, so I just always choose the full bust option. It works really well for me. Now knowing what the finished garment measurements were and the finished length, I knew that I needed to add at least one inch of length to my pattern. That's just to get it to hit above the knee, otherwise I think it would end up a little bit short on me just because I'm five foot eight. But other than that, no other changes. I didn't really move the bust start. The bust start is designed on a knit. Usually that will be correctly placed for me when there's a dart with a knit fabric. Remember the fabric stretches vertically as well. I always do move woven darts down, but don't assume that the fitting adjustments you do for wovens are gonna be the same ones that you need for knit fabrics. Just don't assume that because it's very different. <laughs> fitting is very different. As always, I have sewing to share. It's very easy to put together. You will see how easy. And I have focused on the way that these ties come together, both the front and the back tie mainly focused on that. At the end, you're not gonna see me sewing side seams and regular seams, but what is important and what's different, you'll see it, so let's see. I had to fully extend my fabric and the only way I can see how to place these pattern pieces is here just in the family room on the floor. I'm not going to be cutting the pieces here, I'm just going to be placing them and pinning them. The one that I wanted to place first to make sure I had the correct width was the back right here. So I made sure to put it there and then flip it and then I know that that is the total width I need to cut my back. Once I had that determined, then I started playing with the front piece and how much I could scoot it down to fit right there because it's just one piece for the front. You can see it's a curved piece like that. That's where the tie is. There is a single bust dart over there. There's no bust dart over here. This is another tie piece that I'm gonna get from this area. My sleeves, because the fabric is extended, I'm gonna cut one and then cut the other and then the neckband. The one I'm gonna cut first is the back. For the tie feature to be on the left wearer side as per the original, you need to cut the front piece with the fabric facing right sides up. Otherwise you're gonna end up with a tie on the other side and the instructions might not make too much sense. Here I am back with my pattern pieces on the floor still so you can see them clearly. This is the front, a fully extended piece. This is my back, I've got it folded there. Neckband, short sleeves. There's also a long sleeve if you want and this is gonna be the back tie. Not many pieces, it's not gonna be as hard as you think. This dress is going to have sleeves and it's a neat fabric so the shoulders can always stretch out in the form. So stabilizing them is always a good idea. I'm just using a little strip of interfacing that doesn't have any stretch to do that. This doesn't have any stretch as you can see. And now by fusing that on the shoulder, we eliminate the stretch right there. Here on the front piece where this tie comes and we have these angles, we have a dot there and we have a dot there. And we want to put a little square of interfacing there. Now with my black interfacing, I'm not gonna be able to see the mark. So I'm just gonna poke a pin through the other side and I can mark it again once this is on. Now I can see where the pin is going into the fabric here. So I can make my mark again, and then I can take out the pin and just put the iron on top again for a little bit. We're gonna start working on this tie. This is the front, I've got the wrong sides up. There is my single bust dart, and these are the ties. That's where I interface to stabilize these little angles. So what we're gonna do is just take this area and put it right sides together. We want to match this up here. So we're gonna sew this shape like this. We have the dot where we pivot and then we sew that way. And then we're gonna go back and reinforce and sew that little area of the angle again. And then we snip into there and turn it right sides out. I'm gonna go ahead and pin everything, but before sewing, I wanna get my bust dart out of the way. I just wanna do it and then I can just forget about it. So I'm gonna use a Jersey needle number 90. There are some areas where I'm gonna go through a few layers. So that is the one I think is okay. My knee is not too light also. I will be using the sewing machine. I'll use a narrow zigzag. That's a zigzag. Narrow means it's gonna be almost flat. So that is almost flat. And here the length of the stitch, I'm gonna use anywhere from 2.5 to 3. For the main seams, I'll use this. If the thickness is increased by a few layers, I'll just increase it to 3. I'm gonna start at the dot point and I place the needle manually right on the edge of the fabric and then start. 
and go off to the wider part i feel i have more control and you get a neater dot point like that i didn't back tuck there i just left some threads and did a little knot by hand and i think this looks really neat from the right side okay so here is this seam that we're going to sew now there's the bust that so i've got this side facing up like this and you align these raw edges and this dot aligns with the dot underneath right there so i poked up in and made sure everything matched you can see that the angles are different and this little area doesn't match that one that's the way it's been made it's not an error so i'm going to guide myself from this edge the edge on the top for my 3 8 seam allowance and we're going to sew from here pivoting at the dot and continuing this way Okay, you can see the difference in the angles right there, but as long as you sew to the dot and pivot, you'll be fine. Now we're gonna sew this again in this area for about two inches there, two inches there, just to reinforce it. And then we're gonna snip into there. So I'm basically sewing right on top of where I sewed before and I used a shorter stitch length in this area. Okay, now we're gonna snip up to the dot. Now this long seam is going to be the tie. What we need to do here is open this up and make sure that this seam ends up in the center right there. I'm going to open up that seam allowance and I'm going to sew that and then I'm going to head over to the iron and actually press the seam open nice and neat and flat. Before I head to the iron, this section that goes horizontally around the waist area just underneath the bust start. We need to serge this or finish it some way. I'm going to serge it. So I'm going to start there and then finish right there. Once I've got that done, I'm going to head over to the iron and just press the seam open, tidy up this tie. Right here, I don't want to just cut it off because it can unravel. So. I'm going to find my real threads here, not the woolly nylon, and just pull them out. Super easy to see them. And then this is all undone and I can just do a little knot and this will keep this surged area safe without it coming apart later on. I find this is so much easier than trying to catch everything with a crochet and pushing it back. That's what I used to do in the past. Okay, here we have the tie. I have already sewn that and here is that seam that I want to press open. I'm trying to press the seam but not get a crease on the sides here of the tie so I'm basically doing it with the tip of the iron this horizontal seam that we have over here the one that I searched I want to press the seam down this seam is not going to be seen at the waist because it's going to be covered by the tie and while we're here I'm going to press the dart down you know I don't sew and press and sew and press I sew until I have to come and press and then I press a bunch of seams I always will press I'm not someone that will leave seams unpressed but I don't believe in getting up after every single seam you know okay now that the tie has been pressed and everything else I'm just going to put my hand in here a little bit and just grab this tie and pull it out and it'll be all right sides out the tip here I just have to work it a little bit so it's neat this is a piece called the back tie and it's a long piece it's wider on one side and narrower on the other it's not a rectangle at all and we're just going to place this one right sides together as well and sew it so it's just another long seam with a 3 8 seam allowance that then we're going to go ahead and press and turn under I'm also going to sew this short end right here to close up the tie. I'm going to head over to the iron, turn these right sides out and just give it a good press. Okay, I have the front piece extended. You can see that is the tie that we've done previously. This is the tie that I've done separately. And here on the waist area, you're going to find a little mark, a little notch. Okay, here's a closer look. This is the right side of my fabric. This is part of the side seam. There's a few notches on this curve. One is marked B, one is marked A, and there's a mark in the center. And then your tie is going to have a little notch right there. So it's just following this. It's got the exact same shape. You can see that the tie also has the curve of the waist 
place it's not a rectangle there so just match them up the seam allowance that we're going to use for the side seams is 3 8 so i'm just basting within this with a longer stitch length now that all the tie business is done i've just aligned the bag and put it on top of the front here right sides together and I'm sewing the shoulder seams. I've got the bag layer on the top where it's interfaced that is a stable area and that's the one that you always want touching the press foot. The not stable area can touch the feed dogs at the bottom and it's just two little shoulder seams sewn at 3 8 then I'm going to go ahead and search these seams. After sewing the shoulder seams I press the seam towards the back and I've already sewn on my neckband so I'm just pressing it flat. I'm not going to top stitch it I'm just going to leave it and press it as flat as I can I think that's going to be enough now at this point you have extended armholes you can sew your sleeve in on the flat and then sew the seam of the sleeve with the side seam you know I'm going to sew the side seams first and then put the sleeve in on the round so on the side seam on one side you're just going to have this little seam that was sewn that horizontal seam and the other side seam is going to catch this tie when you're sewing it so those are the last steps I won't film those just straight side seams setting the sleeve and my hem and the dress is done I have a whole masterclass about neckbands and bindings, all of that. So I will leave you that video link down below. And I'll also add at the minute where the neckband appears. So this is my first test and dress. This is as per the original, my tester version. And you can see the neckline here on the top is wider and it's not super low. I think it's perfectly fine. I have short sleeves. There's really nothing special with the sleeves. There's no design elements there. <laughs> And also when you see this on the hanger, it doesn't really have much hanger appeal, does it? So here is the horizontal seam. You're not gonna see that seam when you wear it because the tie that's on the side is gonna come over from the back like this. And then these two ties are gonna meet on the side. So yeah, it does look like a bit of a mess when you see it on the hanger. You think, how does this go? But then when you put it on, it's magical. <laughs> I really love it. This is the side that doesn't have the basta, the side where the tie is. And then over here is where you have a single bust that right there. Really well placed, at least for my body, it fits perfectly. I didn't need to do anything with it. And then at the back, it's just a back cut on the fold. But you saw that there weren't many pattern pieces. It wasn't really complex. Now, because I'm working with a medium weight fabric and it is my preference the way I like to sew, I have sewn my side seam with the sewing machine using a narrow zigzag and serge the edges separately, press those open. I just like it. I like how it hangs. I really, really dislike having serge seams directly. When the fabric is heavier, it just doesn't feel nice. And I like seams flat like this. That's the way I like them. You know, everyone's entitled to their opinion. You know, I just share the way that I like to sew. Doesn't mean you have to agree. <laughs> So that's the way I sew. That's the amazing thing about sewing. Once you get the hang of it and you try different techniques, you can start having your own preferences. And that's one of the things that can make you the happiest in your sewing, making your own decisions, knowing what you like and why. And I have a sewing channel and I just share that. Doesn't mean you have to do what I do. I just share what I do. This was a light ITY or something, rayon spandex. I wouldn't do this, but definitely I did that for, for this one. My hem, one inch, turned up and I hand hemmed it. I also hand hemmed my sleeve. I did sew a little bit with a twin needle and I thought I'm gonna ruin the dress. <laughs> it looks so nice, it looks so clean. I just did it by hand and I think it's worth it sometimes. Especially with a solid, I think with a solid, you can really see the twin needle hem there and it just, I just I'm not a fan. <laughs> so let's see this one on. Very simple styling, nothing over the top. I think the purple is striking enough already. So yeah, everything else is very simple. This is my Tustin dress from Each to Stitch and I used a really lovely purple athletic knit. Mine is a size 14 with a full bust option, blended to a 16 waist and 16 hips. I love that tie on the side. Construction is very different and easier than what you expect. And the tie here doesn't just tie on the front, it goes all the way from the side seam and you have a tie on the back as well. I love that design that just drapes over your tummy like that. It's so pretty, it looks like there's dads but there isn't. <laughs> You can see the tie at the back as well. I think this is a different feature to other styles that have a tie on the side. I really love the fit. There's also a single basta on one of the sides. You can see it's perfect. The length is supposed to be above the knee. I lengthened mine by one inch just to get it above my knee. And this one has short sleeves. You can do a long sleeve. The neckline is a little higher, a little wider. I think it's perfect. It's finished with a neckband. Actual sewing, it was very, very simple. But much faster than I was expecting and it's it's a beautiful design I'm gonna really enjoy wearing. Completely 100% my style and in purple, no way to go wrong. <laughs>
For the second one, I knew I wanted to make a top for cooler weather. I wanted to use the long sleeve option and I had a good look at my fabrics. The thing about this design, because the front has this curved feature like this, if you use anything with a plaid or a stripe, it's gonna distort and it, it'll end up looking like this, which might be desirable if that's what you like. I just decided I didn't want that. <laughs> it did limit my choices with my prints that I had there with my sweater knits because I really wanted to use a sweater knit. So I ended up choosing a solid and that's fine. It really shows off the features and I'm gonna really enjoy it. There's no one that can tell you that a dress can't be a top if you like the style, especially this type of dress that doesn't have a full skirt. You know, it's just got an A-line skirt. It's fairly close fitting, so it's just as easy as putting the dress on. That's what I did, look in the mirror, marked where I wanted my hem to end, measured the distance from there to the actual hem of the dress and figured out I needed to cut off 15 inches and that would include the hem allowance for my top. So that's what I did, it was so, so easy. The rest of the sewing was exactly the same, except for the way I finished the neckline and the bottom of the sleeves. This is my green sweater knit. I think it's a lovely shade of green and I've got this matching leather look jersey. So instead of using a neckband, I did exposed binding. And when I did the binding, I used a half an inch seam allowance, which makes the binding just a little wider because you sew the binding right sides together here, flip it to the inside, wrapping around the fabric, and then you catch it inside. And then to make it even neater, I sew there, ditch in the ditch. So that's really pretty. It's a little bit of a detail I wanted to add to a simple solid top like this. I finished the bottom of the sleeves in the same way, exactly the same. And I recently showed you a sweater that I made where I did this, and it was just so fresh in my mind. I thought I'm gonna do the same because it looks really cool and I have the matching green to go with it, so why not? Over here is the tie that comes from the front piece, the horizontal seam, the other tie that comes from the back, and that you tie right there. And it's just shorter. I have a twin needle hem right here. And the rest is very simple. With this one, I didn't do the seams pressed open and searched separately. I, I did use a sewing machine though, but I searched them together and just pressed them to the back because the fabric is a little lighter weight, although it's still not a really lightweight fabric. But because it's a top, I think you have more choices with the fabric than if it was a dress because the problem about light fabrics clinging is maybe around the full hip area, which in this case, there's no, that, that's not an issue right there. So I think this is a great, great choice to make the pattern even go further. You can have tops and dresses because yeah, it's very easy. <laughs> so I have a monochromatic look for you, all in green from head to toe. Let's see. This is a Tustin top. It's not a top originally in the pattern, it's a dress, but it's as easy as making it shorter. I really wanted to have a sweater with this design. There's no reason why you just can't make a dress shorter. And I used a green sweater knit. You'll see it up closer. And I've got a sort of green monochromatic look with a colorful purse here. I really like it as a sweater. There's no reason why you can't use a knit like this. I think the tie drapes amazingly. Underneath here, I've got just a light cami. This is a sweater after all, so I'm gonna wear something underneath. It's got all the same features of the dress, even the bust and I think the fit is really good. Mine is a size 14 with a full bust option, blended to a 16 waist and 16 hips. And I'm ready for autumn. This could work for spring as well. And I really like that neckline, it's a little higher and to make it a little more special, instead of the neckband, I added exposed binding with a matching green leather look jersey, just to give it a little extra detail and I really enjoyed doing that. I think it looks really neat. I've got the same at the bottom of the hem for the sleeves. I do like my sleeves nice and long. I really like how this looks over pants. It would be great over a skirt as well. I love the color and the style. Yeah, it's just perfect. If you've already made a dress, it's so easy to just put the dress on and put some pins where you'd like the hem to be and then measure how much you want to take out from the hem and that's it. Easy peasy and you can have a tustin top as well.
I'm really happy with my version for colder weather and my version for hotter weather. Now I still gotta get this out of my system and make a sleeveless dress out of it. I ran out of time, but I know I'm gonna make a sleeveless dress again. It was so enjoyable. It's just so pretty, easy to sew. It didn't take much time at all. Remember that the Tustin dress is 20% off through Friday the 7th of April if you want to get it for a bit less. My affiliate link is down below. You think this Tustin sweater was cool? If you haven't seen, I posted a video a few days ago with some inspiration about sweaters I've been making lately with patterns that are not supposed to be sweaters but you can get away with it. So if you want more inspirations on sweaters, have a look at that video. That's all from me today and I'll see you again very soon with more sewing. Bye!